Hi guys, if you're growing a tropical plant in a temperate region like I am, chances are one question that crosses your mind is, ah, how do I look after this plant? Is it gonna die? How do I give it the sunlight hours it needs? How do I keep it nice and warm? Well, I'm gonna answer all those questions for you in this video as I share all my winter care secrets with you on how to look after your Tulsi plant over winter. Now, I've got nine individual Tulsi plants here, okay, and although I'm growing this lot in the ground, okay, I used to initially grow my Tulsi plants in a pot, okay, so the secrets that I'm about to share with you, I'm going to share five tips with you, okay, and all those five tips, okay, you can get some takes take away out of those five tips regardless of whether you're growing your Tulsi in ground or in pots. And each of those five tips have a lot of information under it, so make sure you don't skip any part of this video. I'm Komo and welcome to my channel, Urban Hobby Gardener. Now in case you're new here, I make free educational videos to empower you on your gardening journey. So if that's of interest to you, I invite you to subscribe to my channel and press that bell icon so you don't miss my videos. And if you're on Facebook, I post a lot of tips on there too, so be sure to check out my Facebook page, Urban Hobby Gardener. Okay guys, let's get started. Okay, so let's first talk about sunlight. Now, Tulsi needs about six hours of sunlight, or if you kind of really push its luck, it still needs about four hours of direct sunlight. Now, on a cloudy day like this, it hasn't really got its fair share of sunlight today, but tomorrow it's expected to be a sunny day. Okay, so during winters when the sun does come out, on days that it does come out, I try and maximize the amount of sunlight that my Tulsi plants get, okay? And the way I do this is before I put my Tulsi in the ground, I selected a position where it gets maximum amount of sunlight during winter, okay? So I have planted this in my north-facing garden. Now remember, I'm in southeast Australia, so in the southern hemisphere, our north facing garden is the equivalent of a south facing garden up in the northern hemisphere and that's because in the southern hemisphere the sun travels along the northern skies okay so by putting it in my north facing garden my tulsi plant gets the morning sun the midday sun and also the west sun now of course in summer okay my tulsi plant would just scorch if it got west facing sun okay but it doesn't get that much intense heat in summer because I have a big deciduous tree onto the west. Okay, so what that does is in summers it blocks out the west sun, but in winters it still lets all that light through. The second thing that you need to think about is how you're going to keep your tulsi plant warm. Okay, now being a tropical plant, your tulsi needs at least about 25 degrees Celsius days okay or again if you really push it at least 10 degrees celsius now last night it was three degrees celsius and it isn't a whole heap warmer right now either okay but as you can see behind me my tulsi plant is still nice and green and it's doing pretty well okay now usually people would put a frost blanket over it i don't get frost in my area so a frost blanket isn't mandatory for me but you can argue that I should have put a frost blanket here, but the reason I don't is because I don't need to. And my secret to that is basically two things. Now you'll see that I've planted my Tulsi plant very close to a brick wall, okay? Um, let me take you out in the distance. And as you can see, okay, my Tulsi plant relatively is in very close proximity with the brick wall okay so if you have a brick wall okay in your north facing garden if you're in the southern hemisphere or the south facing garden if you're in the northern hemisphere okay then ideally pick that spot because what the brick wall does is it absorbs the heat whatever heat it can get during the day and then it releases that heat during the night okay so for example, when it was 3 degrees Celsius last night, my Tulsi plants were still nice and warm thanks to this brick wall. The other thing I do is, I'll take you in a little bit closer, you'll see, you know, I've put like some leaves around my plant. I haven't put, you know, a lot of leaves around my plant 
because I didn't want that you know it retains a lot of moisture because that could possibly rot my Tulsi plant okay but I've kept just enough leaves around it um, to kind of keep the soil a little bit warmer okay now because it is such a thin layer it obviously won't kind of keep the soil super warm okay but it keeps it a tad warmer than what it would otherwise now I understand that not every garden would have a brick wall okay so if your garden doesn't have a brick wall okay then make sure you do put up the frost blanket and put that up in autumn okay you don't want to do that you know in winters you want to put up your frost blanket when the soil is still warm okay so even though the atmospheric temperature starts cooling okay during autumn your soil is still warmer okay so by putting a frost blanket in at that point in time okay you're effectively trapping the heat of that soil within that frost blanket okay it's all about keeping the roots nice and warm now if you are growing your tulsi plant in a pot and you're able to move that pot okay the ideal thing to do is bring that pot indoors okay you don't want to leave it outside okay just bring it inside if you have a greenhouse that's awesome shift it there if not just bring it inside your house but one thing you want to make sure is do not put your tulsi plant you know near a heating source okay don't put it close to your heaters or your radiators or anything of that sort okay you might think that you know if you kind of stick your plant next to a heater or you know quite close to it it'll keep it nice and warm it wouldn't in fact it's going to completely dehydrate and burn the plant and it's going to be pretty hard to then you know revive your plant after that all right so if you want to keep your plant alive okay Bring it indoors to keep it warm, but don't stick it next to a heating source. And one more thing, okay, if you have tiles in your house and you're going to put your um, pot on top of those tiles, okay, then, you know, put some kind of pot stand or something underneath that pot, just so that you minimize the amount of contact your pot gets against the cold floor. The other thing you want to do is you want to protect your Tulsi plant from high winds, okay? Now, your Tulsi plant tends to have very tender stems. Let me try and find one as an example. Hopefully you can see that, okay? It has very tender stems, so when your garden gets really high winds, okay, your Tulsi plant will get absolutely crushed okay so you don't want to do that okay so i've got like relatively biggish trees around um, the fence of my garden which kind of act as the first line of defense and block out those really strong winds okay and as you can see here i've also got you know some uh, freesia plants growing okay and i'm gonna leave this here until they get so tall that they start blocking sunlight for the tulsi plants that are behind it okay so this by itself isn't the best defense from wind but given the first line of defense this kind of is like my quasi technically third line of defense because we've got a couple of other things there as well but this is kind of quasi my third line of defense so by the time you know those winds really hit my tulsi plant um, the you know absolute force of it has diminished significantly so you know think about putting up wind barriers around your garden for your tulsi plant especially if your garden gets super duper windy Okay, let's talk about moisture. Okay, now Tulsi, it does like moisture, but it doesn't like a lot of moisture. Okay, so when you've got your plants outdoor, okay, and it gets a lot of rainfall. Now, where I am, it gets a lot of rainfall during winter. Okay, so I virtually don't water my Tulsi plant at all because it gets whatever moisture it needs from the rain anyway. Okay, so if it's rained five days out of seven, I then don't want to water it for the next two days okay when the soil when the soil kind of starts to feel 
when the soil starts to feel dry which at the moment it doesn't okay but when it does feel dry that is the time when I water my Tulsi plants okay not before that because excess moisture can kill your plants okay now if you've kept your Tulsi plant indoors again being indoors it is not going to get that much evaporation okay so don't water your plants every single day you really do have to adjust your watering schedule and frequency okay so touch the soil okay put like your finger right through the soil and if you can feel it's moist don't water it okay if it kind of starts to feel dry that's the only time you should water your Tulsi plant now before I share my fifth and final tip with you I just want to say that if you have found this video useful so far please do give it a thumbs up and please do give it a share okay so fifth and final tip okay and that is about managing the stress on your Tulsi plant okay now when it is this cold your plant is already stressed out you don't want to give it any more stress if any other salt otherwise that could be the last straw for your Tulsi plant okay by stress I kind of meaning two things okay so one kind of stress comes around when you're pruning these seed pods off okay now obviously that needs to be done frequently so your plant doesn't die but you really need to be careful of the timing at which you prune your seed pods off okay if you do it too early in the morning when there is dew on your plant when you know when it is absolutely freezing cold okay that puts a lot more pressure a lot more stress on the pulsey plant okay so make sure you time the pruning of the seed pods kind of around midday or maybe on a sunny day where you can okay so that that's kind of one part of the stress management second you want to make sure that your Tulsi plant is already nice and healthy going into winter okay if it's you know if it's got like a pest attack if it's um, you know malnutrition and things like that okay then chances of it surviving over winter become that much less okay so the healthier your plant is going into winter okay the more well fed it is okay like if you've given it all the nutrients like you know fertilizing and everything that it needs before going into winter okay all throughout its growing season so here in southeast australia that's mainly about spring and summer okay then again your plant is nice and healthy and that helps it cope with the stress of you know a cold outdoors a lot better okay now in terms of fertilization needs for your Tulsi plant now because it is a leafy um, plant okay you want to use a fertilizer that is high in nitrogen okay so those were my five tips okay of how to keep your plant not just surviving but thriving and happy over winter in a temperate region I hope you found that useful until my next video, happy gardening!